ينادي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Now when uh, the idea for this uh, was first presented to me and I was told to choose, choose a name uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to share uh, I very naturally um, actually <laughs> To tell you the truth, I, I actually talked with my teacher about it, and it was him who suggested an al wakil knowing me. Um, al wakil is one of my favorite attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is about uh, tawakkul. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his attributes is al wakil. And if you, if you look at the meaning of this word, uh, when you, you know, just when you're in, in our normal human dealings, if we want to entrust someone with something for us. So for example, we want to entrust someone to sign on our behalf or entrust someone with um, some, some amount of money. That person is called a wakil. We have made someone into a wakil for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-wakil. He is the ultimate uh, trustee, the one who we entrust. And the question we have to ask ourselves is what have we entrusted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the answer is we have entrusted everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of our matters are in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. And so to really actualize and to understand fully this, this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to understand the concept of tawakkul. At the very heart of tawakkul, um, one way in which tawakkul was explained or defined was at-tawakkulu tarh al-badani the meaning of this statement is that tawakkul is throwing the body into ubudiyya. So you, ubudiyya here meaning obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the body is thrown into that. that the, the, body the body is thrown into the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obedience, while at the same time, the heart is attached to the realm of rububiyya. So we know that the, the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been, uh, scholars have, di have divided the, the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into different categories. One of the categories of the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tawheed al-rububiyya, and one is tawheed al-rububiyya and uluhiyya. And in this case, our body is actualizing Tawheed al-Uluhiyya through our worship. And yet the heart, and this is honestly, this is where we have to understand. It. This is where Tawakkul lives, in the heart. Uh, so what that means is that my heart, while my body is striving, while my body is in a state of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and is working with, within the means, using the means, the heart is completely at rest in a state of tawakkul. And that means that the heart is, is, is witnessing this concept, which is, ma sha Allahu kan wa ma lam yashit lam yakun. This is basically the uh, summary of the realm of rububiyya, the understanding, the full conviction and belief that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed will happen. And whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not will will never happen. So this means that while I drive for something, I know in my heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control. And beyond that, I have entrusted my affairs to Him knowing that whatever He does is with my best interest in mind. So this means that if I want something, uh, I have to, the heart needs to be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while I may strive for it. I may still try for it. I'll give, I'll give an example of this. 
this happens, uh, you know, a lot. For example, with regards to marriage, with regards to choosing a spouse, a lot of times a person will want to marry a specific, a specific individual, and you know, two people may want to get get married, and they go through all of the means. Uh, the means in this case would be they talk to the parents, they you know they go through the motions, they try everything to make it happen, and it doesn't happen. This is a case where you have gone through the means, but tawakkul means tawakkul uh, requires that when you, after you have exhausted the means, you realize that whatever the end result is, that's with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and you're pleased with it. This is the the ultimate. This is the concept of of, of uh, giving your affairs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and relying on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The other part of tawakkul that I want to really emphasize is this. Because we live in a world where there are things that we can see and things that we cannot see, we tend to rely on the things that we can see over the things that we cannot see. So what that means is that I'm going to, um, I, for example, I'm sick. If I'm sick, I go to the doctor, and this is, this is part of using the means. I go to the doctor and I take medicine, and I take that medicine, and then what happens, um, suppose one day I run out of the medicine. Now, if my dependency is on the medicine itself, at that point, I will collapse, because my dependence was on the medicine, now the medicine was taken away, and now I'm, I'm, I'm full of anxiety, and I'm very worried. Now, a person who instead, their tawakkul, their, their, their attachment and their reliance is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though they are doing the means, they're taking the medicine, but they know that, that the, the, the one who heals is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is another attribute of Allah, that the one who's taking care of them is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another example of this is in, with regards to provision. A lot of times people put their reliance on their money. So, so long as they have money in the bank, they feel secure. But the moment that that money is gone from the bank, they become anxious. This is a sign that there is not tawakkul. Because if there is tawakkul, that means that internally my state is unchanged regardless of whether there is money in the bank or there is no money in the bank. Because my tawakkul is not on the money in the bank. My reliance is not on the money in the bank to take care of me. My reliance is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is tawakkul. So you know that and you can gauge your own tawakkul in this way. When the means are taken away, how does your heart, what is the state of your heart? Does your heart change? Does your heart move from being still and being, um, being at peace and being feeling, uh, you know, taken care of and calm to being agitated. If your heart changes, um, and to the degree that it changes, that is to the degree of, of the, your, your deficiency or one's deficiency in tawakkul. Because if we, you know, we move with our attachment of where we're relying, of where we're depending, and if our dependence is on these means, as soon as the means are taken away, whether it's money or the medicine or the people that we're relying on or, or our car or our house or whatever it is that we are relying on, as soon as it's taken away, that's when people crash. That is an indication that the, that the reliance, the tawakkul is not on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather that we have entrusted our affairs to our money or we have entrusted our affairs to our careers or to other people. And, and you know, one, one really nice metaphor for this is to think about, um, and, and subhanAllah, one of the shiuch I, I was listening to, speaking about the concept of tawakkul, and he gave the example of a bungee jumper, that when a bungee jumper uh, jumps, you know, you're, you're attached to this rope, right? And, and so when that person jumps, they are not worried about falling uh, or crashing. Or, or hurting themselves because they know that, that there's a rope holding them. And this really is the rope. Uh, this rope in this, in this, in this example is, is our one, the, the only one rope that we hold on to, and that's the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what we do, 
if we're holding on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and no matter what happens to us, uh, we never fall because we have that rope. But here is our problem, is we hold on to false rope. We hold on to fake rope, not the real rope. We hold on to, to ones that are made of thread, made of, um, you know, just very, very flimsy ropes. And so what happens when that rope breaks and when that rope is cut, that's why we fall. And subhanAllah, this life, everything in the creation um, is, is, is going to, is, is, will break. Everything in, of the creation is, is passing away. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remains. Everything, everything on this earth is passing away. And those other things, whether it's our money or it's the people in our lives, those other things were, were not created to hold our weight. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was created to hold our weight and was, and was, um, can be al wakil Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can truly be our trustee. So if we really want to uh, understand this concept of tawakkul, I want to inshallah end with one of my favorite stories, uh, and it's the story of Musa alayhi salam when he was standing in front of the Red Sea. And the reason I love this story so much, it, well, for personal reasons, because subhanAllah, this, this section um, in the Qur'an was something that, that I carried with me at a time when, when I was being tested in my tawakkul. And, and it's a story of Musa alayhi salam when he was trying to escape Fir'aun. And Fir'aun and his army were behind him. And he got to a point where now in front of him was the Red Sea, and the people who were with him, Bani Israel, at this point, when they saw the situation, so this is again the physical situation, the, 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 the world of, of, of the creation, the, the things that you can see, the scene, uh, and that is that they looked trapped. It looked hopeless for them. And so they thought and they said to him, we will surely be overtaken. At this point, you know, they just, they just thought that that's it for them. But look at the response of Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam responded, you know, completely with, without being shaken. By no means. You know, they thought they were going to be overtaken just because the physical and the, the scene, what they could see, it was, it was taken away. It looked like they were trapped. But Musa alayhi salam could see through that because Musa alayhi salam tawakkul and reliance was not on the things that he could see but his reliance was on what you could not see it was on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he said Kalla, inna ma ya rabbi In, by no means for my lord is with me and he will guide me through aqulin qawli hadha wa astaghfir Allah li wa lakum innahu ghafurur rahim subhanak Allah wa bihamdak nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. <تصفيق>